if you were to give the new fifth graders next year advice about how to be successful in the exhibition, if it was the same as, organized the same as this year, what would you want them to know? Okay, my advice would be, it will be difficult and frustrating at first. It will, I know. <laughs> and, um, we but just give it like a week and a week or two. And then everything's just gonna, it's gonna get better. And like, you'll get along more with the people. Um, and yeah, and it could be like hard at first, like with the organization and stuff, but again, it will get better. Tell me what's hard about it at the beginning that gets figured out. Um, because um, we've never had to work with four other individuals. So, um, it's kind of hard because we have lots of different personalities, but you'll get used to it. So the the challenge for you was was uh, personal and less the research. Mm -hmm. Yeah, definitely the research is like not a big deal. So you, I think you're suggesting that over the course of the exhibition, you learn to make compromises, you learn to be more tolerant, you learn to be more respectful, learn mm -hmm. to communicate. Is that that's your experience in your team? Mm -hmm. Do you agree with that, Jason? Yeah. I mean, because we're talking about your team, you're in the same team. Do you agree with what Dasha said? Um, yeah, but, um, so they, the fourth grader and coming fifth graders, um, personally, I think that, like, rest of the grades, people get along very well. Like, everyone's saying that this class is a weird class, huh? but Great. I yeah. think people, I I've think. I've never heard that. I, I, I never think, heard that. I think people get along better there. But, um, yeah, I agree that as, as you go on, you start getting used to the personalities. Um, yeah, I guess. What do you think, Dom? <coughs> what advice do you have? Um, before you choose the topic, you really need to think about what you're going to mm. be researching about. Because if you pick something right away that ch uh, you figure it out in the middle that you're not going to be interesting, uh, to you, your project may fail, so you need to really think about it. And also, for the people that you may have conflict toward, you need to uh, compromise because you're going to be working with that person for uh, five to six weeks, so you have to learn to have teamwork. Yeah. And you have to not try to avoid the person that you're yeah. not comfortable with. You have to just go with it. Because if you avoid them, then your projects, mm -hmm. then apart. then their part of the project from you is going to fall apart. Because your whole project, that it all all parts of the every everyone's research all sums up to the one thing. So if you fall apart from someone else's research, then the whole pro like James's um, thing, how he said you're holding the candle, you're walking in a room full of dynamite. One trip. The room explodes. So, Arby, what do you think? What advice would you have for the kids next year? I would say don't get all... Um, well, make sure your topic is something that you're really interested in and not just hmm. you want to be happy or you want your other team to be happy but you're not really interested in it. You have to be really interested in it. And if somebody disagrees, don't get all... Don't make it last. Just say, okay, we'll just... Um, sorry for what happened and just move on and it, uh, well I, mm, I mean not in a bad way sure not of course yeah way. let's say that um, the, the one question I think Mrs. Walsh and I have is you made essential agreements at the beginning I could imagine in some groups you just make them and forget about them they, ha they really have no effect in your team was that what was your experience did they matter so yeah because at first, Josh and Ashley were facilitators, and Ashley was she 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 was not letting Dasha speak enough. Our our whole our whole group was doing that. But then one of our essential agreements before that started happening was share the air, which is letting other people talk as well. Yeah. So then, I so then we kept telling our, um, Ashley to be more quiet. So she did that. She, she kept being more quiet and Dasha started speaking up until she got to the point where she thought she wasn't being helpful, which she was, so she started, so she gave me the role of facilitator. And after that, she wasn't 
over she wasn't talking too much but then but she, she but she was leveling out with the rest of the group in the conversations so this is an example of that the yeah. the essential agreements you made in a team really did yeah matter yeah because then dasha dasha might have felt that she wasn't getting enough speech so and that let everyone and it was successful in the end right yeah you feel that it way? was really successful yeah Dylan, what do you think um once you uh, make, if you make the central agreements and actually stick to it, it makes everything run sm more smoother. Like for our team, I, I could predict that if we didn't have those central agreements, our team would have been disastrous. Because um, of, like one of our essential agreements was to not talk over each other and not argue with each other. And if we didn't make that, our team would just be um, wasting time arguing with each other over a simple thing. So you're saving time and also making things run smoother for you and both your team. And you're saying that in your experience, they really did work that way too. Yeah. It's not just uh, what they could do, they really did that. Mm -hmm. Ria, what do you think? Um, I think that they helped because um, at the beginning, everybody was kind of cutting into what everybody was saying and it wasn't like, sh um, giving other people a chance to talk or two people were always talking and they couldn't they wouldn't give anybody else a chance to talk and we made that and so everybody was like sharing more and we kind of did where um well we thought about doing where somebody had a pencil and if they had the pencil they talked mm -hmm. but we didn't really do that but that was just an example of what we could do if it but everybody started sharing. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. What you're saying is you set you you set essential agreements, and they really didn't have an effect. They really did, they did matter to your group. And you, do you feel the same way? Um, I think they did have an effect on my group because um, without them, like me and Alex don't really get along. But without the essential agreements, we just my, my group we just would have fallen apart by me and Alex arguing. So it's real said, so it did matter to you. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. Dasha, what do you think? Um, I think they did help. Um, I definitely agree with Jason. Um, that they did help, like, with the more dominant personalities in our group. Um, they kind of like backed off, and yeah, now Jason's facilitator. So about okay. myself is that. Sometimes when I'm explaining things to my group, like um, questions that you give us to talk to as a group, my thinking comes too fast to my mouth and I don't let other people talk. So like you ask us and my I'm, I'm already thinking and it's already coming to my mouth. So then when people are still thinking, I ruin that and um, I wouldn't say ruin, but I I don't let that, I don't let their thinking happen as well, and I talk too fast and don't give them a chance. Like in the questions, like, I, I answer too fast, I don't let them get a chance to think for them, think <coughs> too, as well, as what I'm doing, because uh, things just come to me faster than other people, so I need to, let, I, I need to, let that stay in my head and not let it go too fast in my mouth. Um. I mean, uh, as a result of going through the six weeks of working with a team of kids that you wouldn't ordinarily work with, mm -hmm. um, you must have learned something about yourself, about skills, about how to work with other people, what to do, what not to do, when to be active, when to be passive. Do you have any thoughts about that? Um, what, what might you do going into the, uh, the tech challenge next year? Based on what you do this year. So, Ria, what, what were we going to say? Uh, encourage more people to talk more because I talk, like, kind of like Jason said, a lot, and other people are kind of quiet and they think, oh, they're going to talk for me, so I don't have to talk, but I have to give, to, yeah, give other people, make sure they have, they say something mm -hmm. rather than just me saying everything and then just. Going along with Jade's it. good at that because she's always quiet, but she knows it. So like she she seems really quiet in her group, but then she's just let. Uh, what I see is that she just lets other people talk. 
And so all of us have something to work on in a group, and Jade definitely has something that she could probably work on to be a, a stronger group member. It can be that you say less and other people say more. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's what, that's what a real leader might do, is to then, be aware of the team. Yeah, that's then if what we talked to Miss Glick about. We all thought that we have to, one of our goals was to, well, James and I kind of, James thought that he really needed to talk less. Mm -hmm. And Jenna was like, yeah, one of my goals After is I these six talk. weeks, I think that I, like, found myself, like, having more confidence, like talking to other people, which I normally would like not really interact with. Um, yeah, so I think that could like help me in the future. Because you've seen that you can do that and your group respects your voice. You might be shy about doing it, but uh, you've been in a position where you saw that it worked. Anybody else? Yeah. It's almost the same as Dasha. I like I knew this from the past few years, like that I'm shy and nervous when you present in front of over people. Uh, but I know that you have to overcome it in order to have a successful future, to share your ideas, and then that'll make the world a better place. And to let go sometimes. Mm -hmm. So I think we all have a tendency to beat ourselves up, and that's not helpful. To take on more than than we can do ourselves. This um, uh, life task there is to give other people the responsibility and, and not assume the responsibility for everyone around us. And like Celeste, um, my sometimes I just feel like it feels really hot. So on, on my face when I'm presenting. So then for some reason it makes my mouth speak faster. So as I was saying the conclusion and, I was, and as I was getting toward the end, I started speaking faster. So, and, 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 and I used to do what I just did. I, I, I stumble up upon words and I repeat words. Yeah. And yeah. So it, it, it's true for all of us. Yeah, it's kind of the same as Jason. Yesterday when Mr. Hofstein asked that question, I knew the answer, but those seventh graders just like right up there staring at yeah, me. I got like so scared. So but then and they're in my I brother's class. I got so, so like scared that I didn't know, me. like, I didn't know how to, like, talk. Okay.